For this week's Challenge Wednesday, we have our physical therapist, Danica, and Danica is treating a patient with lower back pain after a recent MVA. The therapist selects ultrasound to reduce soft tissue inflammation and improve fluid dynamics. The therapist would like to ensure the affected area is receiving the proper dosage of ultrasound. The treatment area should be no greater than A, two times the size of the ERA, effective radiating area. B, equal to the size of the ERA. C, eight times the size of the ERA. And D, four times the size of the ERA. All right, so we got quite a bit of things here, quite a bit of answer choices that are all talking about whether it's a particular size of the effective radiating area. So you have to know this principle of effective radiating area area let's go up to the top and let's break this down danica is treating a patient with lower back pain after a recent mva that's pretty straightforward right i'm not gathering a lot of information from that first sense i'm not really playing around too much with that now i talked to some people this past week about a strategy that i use my first step when i'm looking at a question is i read it through and after every sentence i go back and reflect on what it is that i just read i don't just continue on reading it y'all i actually take a step back for a second what did i just read did i understand it and if i didn't understand it, i go back and read that sentence before i continue down so that's a little kyle ray strategy for y'all all right. <laughs> All right. So the therapist selects ultrasound to reduce soft tissue inflammation and fluid dynamic. All right. So here's the deal. The therapist is using ultrasound to reduce soft tissue inflammation. Is that what we use ultrasound for? Of course we do. A lot of times that's, that's using the, the pulsed version of ultrasound, the pulse setting, right? And improving fluid dynamics is also considered to be non-thermal pulsed ultrasound. But does that really help me out much to answer this? Not quite. Let me continue down the line. It says the therapist would like to ensure the affected area is receiving the proper dosage of ultrasound. Makes sense to me. Obviously, we don't want that that area to be too small for risk of burning the patient. We don't want to be too big because then the area is not going to get the right amount of ultrasonic waves. So that would be a problem. So we can't have it too big. We can't have it too small. So the question stem says the treatment area should be no greater than. And then we have our answer choices. All right. So before we go in and start dissecting these, let's break this down really quick. You need to know how big that treatment area should be. That's first thing. And then it's all of that related to this thing called the effective radiating area. Now, can I can we go over this really quick? I know some of you on the podcast, you're not able to see me right now, so you're just going to have to just listen. But we need to go over a principle real quick. That way, everybody's on the same page. I want you to envision this. You have an ultrasound head, right? You know, that circular thing at the top of the transducer, right? Okay, cool. So you have that going on. And let me change my color real quick for those of you watching this. And inside of that ultrasound head, there's going to be a certain space that actually has the ultrasonic waves that come out of it. So what am I saying to you? That the entire ultrasound head does not give you ultrasound waves. There's only a part of the ultrasound head that does that. All right. And so it's going to be a smaller part. Now, there's this thing called effective radiating area, and it is the amount of of area underneath that ultrasound head that actually gives you the waves. And so one principle that you need to understand is that I can't have my treatment area be too big. Like I can't have it be the entire back or the entire lower extremity. I can't have that. The reason being is that we have to make sure we're hitting the right tissues, right? We're, we have to make sure that the tissues that we're trying to affect are the ones that are getting the ultrasound waves. If we're doing it over the entire back, the area that we really want to treat is not getting the proper dosage of ultrasound waves. 
so we can't have too big of a treatment area. Does that make sense? All right. And, and in the same respect, we can't have a, a treatment area that's too small either. You know, when you're moving that ultrasound around, you know how you do the cl clockwise and counterclockwise, all that good stuff, right? All right. So we can't have the treatment area being too small because of why? Because, I mean, if it's too small, that one particular area is going to keep getting all the ultrasound waves, right? They're going to get so much of it that we're running the risk of burning the patient. That is the principle that I need you to understand and be able to apply on the MPTE. All right. Now, let's start going through these answer choices. I'll go ahead. I'll run through them. A says two times the size of the ERA. B says equal to the size of the ERA. C says eight times the size of the ERA. And D says four times the size of the ERA. So let's start off at A. Two times the size of the ERA. Is that appropriate? Well, I will tell you this. I like this answer because... You know, the treatment area should be about, it's ideal to be about two to three times the size of the ERA. We don't, we don't want to go any smaller than that. Again, you're running the risk of burning the patient if it's any less than that. So we want the treatment area to be about two to three times the size of the ERA. That's preferable or that's ideal. So I like that answer. It makes sense. But the question doesn't ask what the ideal is now, does it? Y'all remember what the question asked? The question stem? It said the treatment area should be no greater than what? All right. It didn't ask you for the ideal. So that's the reason why I don't like two times the size of the ERA. I don't, I don't like that as our final answer. I'll go ahead and put an X next to that. Let's go down to B. B says equal to the size of the ERA. Well, definitely don't want that, y'all. We do not want our treatment area to be the same size as the ERA. Why? Now we're really at risk of burning the patient because that ultrasound head is going to stay directly over that tissue. That's it. That's how we run the risk of burning them. All right. So definitely not B. Definitely not. Let's go to C. C says eight times the size of the ERA. Woo. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> I, what were you thinking when you heard that eight times the size of the ERA man I'm telling you right now that is pretty big all right that's a pretty big treatment area and so I would say that that's much too big we do not want the treatment area to be eight times the size it's much too much so let's go ahead and x that out for now let's look at d d says four times the size of the ERA and actually, if you if you look in your Miklovitz textbook, if you have that, you might have Cameron, uh, whoever you go through, you will see that the treatment area should be no greater than four times the size of the ERA. The treatment area should be no greater than four times the size of the ERA. I love that answer. That's exactly what it says in literature. I will say this, that it's a common mistake for uh, clinicians who are using ultrasound to just select too big of a treatment area and then the actual tissues that they're trying to give the ultrasound to it's they're not really getting the right amount of dosage so that's the reason why your ultrasound ain't working baby you got too big of a treatment area so i need you all to remember this if you are going for an ideal treatment area it needs to be two to three times the size of the era but we do not want our treatment area to be more or greater than four times the size of the ERA. Our final answer is D. Congratulations, y'all. I got plenty of y'all in here. Let me tell you something, though. A lot of y'all selected A for this one. And I, and I see why you selected it, though, because two times the size of the ERA is, again, the ideal one. And so you may have seen that in the text or may have seen that in your notes. Just know that there's a difference between the two times and the four times. All right. That's something I really want you to understand. Now, listen, ultrasound is one of those modalities that's a freaking sleeper. It's a sleeper. You got to make sure that you're paying attention to these ultrasound principles because they can easily come up as questions. And then you're kind of like, oh, I didn't study that or oh, I can't remember that. So make sure that you at least go over those principles so that you can apply them effectively.